Okay, here's that mid-60s Magnavox Astrosonic Stereo that I showed you the other day. And we're going to try to get this thing back to full operation. Obviously the first thing we need to do is remove the chassis. And we'll start off by removing all of the control knobs. They just pull off. And then you'll want to unplug any uh, cabling from the chassis, including the cable going to the phonograph, the speaker cables, the antenna cables, and the uh, pilot light cable. And you'll want to make note of where everything went so it'll make it easier to hook back up when you reinstall the chassis. And now that we have the knobs removed and the wires disconnected, there are to remove the chassis, there are two Phillips head screws, one here and one over here that have to be removed. And then we have two bolts here. You can't see it very well because the lighting's not that great, but take my word for it, those have to come out. Okay, here's the chassis removed from the cabinet. The chassis number is R204, dated April 1965. This is the underside of the chassis, and you can see all these black Nichicon capacitors that we're going to have to replace. Yeah, Magnavox started using the Japanese Nichicon capacitors early on in the game. And Nichicon is a good brand that's still available, to, available today, but after almost 50 years, they've about reached the end of their life. Here's the top side of the chassis. You can see the four output transistors mounted on the heat sink there and more capacitors on these printed circuit boards that will need to be replaced. But before we start replacing capacitors, I want to clean each and every one of these controls, including the function switch here. And the way I'm going to do that is spray some of this contact or control cleaner into each opening here where the leads enter into the controls. Then I'll work the control back and forth 20 or 30 times to let the cleaner work its way in the control. That will eliminate all of the static and intermittent operation that we were having in the, in the demonstration video of this stereo. And when you're cleaning, cleaning the controls, you don't want to forget to clean this balance control. I don't know why, but most Magnavox stereos don't have a user accessible balance control on the control panel. They have it here on the chassis and these controls get dirty just like these do. So you want to spray the control but you know first take a note of the controls position so you can set it back to the approximate same physical position in which you found it in. Okay now the controls are cleaned I think we can get on with a capacitor replacement. And we've replaced cap number one. You can see it right there, a 100 microfarad capacitor. Here's the original Nichicon cap. As you can see on the capacitor meter, this cap is very much bad. It's only reading, well, we'll round it up to 0.5 microfarad, so that cap is very dried out. And just to show you that my capacitor meter is not shot, here's a brand new 100 microfarad cap. You can see it's reading 100 and seven microfarads which is within tolerance. I think this thing will like it a lot better with new capacitors. Okay we're, we're now about to uh, start replacing the capacitors on the audio driver board and in order to do that you have to remove six screws to allow the board to be dropped down into a position where you can get to the fall side of the board because obviously you can't do that with the circuit board bolted to the chassis here. And we'll use our desoldering braid here to remove the capacitors from the printed circuit board. Okay, we now have all the all of the electrolytic capacitors changed. The only one I didn't change is this two section can capacitor on top of the chassis and it still appears to be okay. And since we're dealing with low voltage, I don't really think there's a big concern, but there's the pile of old old capacitors that came out of the unit. So we're almost ready to apply the, the smoke test and see what happens. 
but before we run the smoke test, I thought we'd have a little entertainment with the with the old style capacitor tester. I have a newer 100 microfarad capacitor connected. We'll now test it for leakage. Now, obviously, we won't go very high on the working voltage, but you see what the eye does. It closes and immediately opens back up to the full open position. Now we'll test one of the old 100 microfarad caps that come out of the stereo. Okay, we have the old capacitor connected. Let's apply a little working voltage here. Look at that. See, it's taking a long time to open up for the eye to open back up. So, that tells me that capacitor is a little bit on the leaky side which is pretty much representative of all the capacitors that I've tested out of this unit and then tested on a modern capacitor meter such as this the capacitors measure two to three times their rated value so yeah they were all shot they needed to go this thing should perform a lot better now so you said if you went through this okay we're fired up and that's, we're know, on the, the AM broadcast band the playing through these you would think that the security will be cheap speakers than or actually they're kind of decent for what they are but I think they went with one of those old KLH phonographs. Um, I basically have my wife on a rope. Phonographs in the early 60s, the but they make a good set of test speakers. Let's try FM now. You might want to pick up a little carry out as well. This FM tuner is still dirty. I need to clean that. And I think I need to touch the alignment up. The FM doesn't seem to be quite as... Doesn't seem to be quite as robust as AM. No treble control. Bass. Okay, now it's time to clean the FM tuner. And in order to do that, you have to remove a couple of shields. First, you have to remove this bottom shield from the underside of the chassis, which is held in place by some screws, or four of them to be exact. And you have to remove this top shield from on top of the tuner, which is held in place by two screws. And you have to unsolder two things one, this little wire sticking up here, it solders right here, and this little tab here, which is right here, and then on the other side of the board you have this little solder tab here that has to be unsoldered. And the way I like to clean these tuners is just to uh, put, a little, put a little bit of rubbing alcohol on uh, like a piece of cardboard or heavy paper or something you can uh, run down in between each plate and then rub the saturated cardboard down between each plate and then once you get that done let it dry good because that can that can affect your alignment and we'll do the same thing for the AM tuner here okay I've cleaned the tuner and eliminated most of the static when tuning across the dial but the FM band does not seem to be quite as spiffy as it should be. Now it brings in the strongest local stations fairly well, but I still have to advance the volume control pretty high in comparison to tuning across the AM band, which is nice and strong, so I'm thinking this chassis may have a problem in the uh, FM RF amplifier circuit, possibly a, possibly a leaky transistor but I really think the FM performance should be better. 
All play here. Your country station. 97 OKK. There's one of the strong stations that comes in really well, but... I just want to say how... Okay, it seems that both the FM RF amplifier and the FM mixer transistors are both questionable. These are both PNP germanium transistors and both of them test leaky. You know, when I test them one direction I get approximately 0.3 volts which is okay, which I'm okay with that, but whenever I reverse the uh, meter probes I get about 1.8 volts volts so uh, it tells me these are leaky and I need to try to replace them and see what happens they cross reference to a NTE 126 now whether or not the local parts house has them or not that's another story it's really going to tick me off if I have to order these but it's getting to the point where I'm having to order most anything I need now so uh you know, what else is new? I used to, the local parts house had everything you needed just about, but not so much the case anymore. Okay, back on the Magnavox. I've tested the FM RF amp, the mixer, and the oscillator transistors, all germanium, and all cross-referenced to an NTE-126. Naturally, the local parts house doesn't have anything and the mail order places want about 10 bucks a pop plus shipping all these transistors check basically the same way and I've encountered germanium transistors that test leaky in the reverse direction in the past yet still seem to work so I really don't know quite where to go with this yet but there is one thing I'm interested in on the collector of the RF amp transistor I'm supposed to be getting a negative 0.15 volts, and that go and that gets its voltage from uh, from the RF coil. But I'm not getting anything on that particular transistor. So yeah, I'm checking on all three terminals of this coil, and I'm getting absolutely zero. So I'm going to have to look at the schematic further and see where the 15 volts or the negative 15 volts comes from and see why we don't have it here. Okay, well that, we're about out of time for this video. So stay tuned to the next video and hopefully we'll get to the bottom of this. Okay, thanks for watching and more to come later.